Mr. Edgar Castillo, how are you doing? Hey, Taylor. I really appreciate you joining us tonight. Uh, a lot of people wouldn't know this, but I've only been in one or two inspections with you. Okay, oh, I... maybe it's more than that. <laughs> maybe it's more. one or 200. <laughs> I think that we have probably done in excess of 250 home inspections together. That sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> so I really appreciate you coming in here because you give so many of the people that we work with confidence and we really appreciate that. Uh, we are here with Edgar Castillo. He is with Canadian Residential Home Inspection Services. You can get all of his contact information on our trusted expert list. And uh, I thank you so much for helping so many of our clients avoid a heartache in home inspections because honestly, you help people dodge bullets. Yeah, well, it's my pleasure to do so. And that's, and that's what I do. And that's what I love to do. <laughs> yeah, I remember like, uh, and I hope you don't mind sharing a little bit of your story. But before you were a home inspector, you were a property investor. Uh, yeah, I have a property that I invested in way back in 2006. So uh, uh, I still have my properties and uh, I still maintain them. But uh, about uh, 10 years ago, I stopped investing in properties because I just had a handful of uh, my share of, <laughs> of heartaches and, and whatnot and uh, owning properties. But in any case, uh, they're still there. And uh, yeah, it's great investment for me. I like the idea yeah. that you basically got into this because you understood what home ownership was and you understood that the people around you normally didn't understand what those maintenance cycles were uh, and to uh, kind of uh, help people get a better picture of what they're looking at. Now, let's dig into yeah. home inspections here because normally you are introduced to people once they've already kind of chosen their property. Uh, right. Often it's somebody around like us that introduced them to trusted experts. They take a look at your... Uh, the, uh, even at your bio, like how many home inspections is it now? Um, I'm pretty close to 9,000 since 2004. Okay. So there is, yeah. uh, I don't know if there's anything you haven't seen. Uh, I'm pretty much uh, safe to say I've, I've seen them all. <laughs> Man, that's incredible. And uh, we're in a lot of those scenarios with, with you. And I always like the way that you explain it to clients, helping yeah. them understand if they're running into trouble, what that looks like. But why don't you walk us through? So uh, when you're doing a home inspection, you obviously walk around the property, but uh, is it like everything that you check? Um, well, we have a system and uh, I generally go off of a checklist in our own system. So we have a, a special process, or at least I have uh, my own process that I follow. But um, there are things, certain things that uh, depending on the year of the home, uh, where it's located, uh, I look for certain things. But, um, you know, I, I think uh, uh, the best way to explain uh, to people um, you know, to avoid your, your, your segment here, uh, to avoid heartache at a home inspection is to actually uh, give them a little bit more preparedness and in, in, uh, knowledge of what we um, can, can say is the most common problems that we look for in a home inspection. So um, if you want, I can go through this. I have a top 10 list of uh, what Ooh. I have. Okay, yeah. Edgar's top 10 list. Let's start. Yeah. Should we do the thing right. like uh, Letterman used to do? So you bet. Number well, 10. I mean, yeah, well, we'll, we'll start off with a poorly maintained home. So right away, uh, first impressions is everything. You're going into a home. Uh, if it's not well maintained, you can expect problems. So uh, obviously, um, broken appliances, uh, uh, burnt out light bulbs, um, you know, if the place is in a mess, you can generally expect that there will be issues because if it wasn't well maintained by the current owner, uh, chances are you're going to see a, a few failures. Uh, granted, uh, uh, most of the uh, uh, deficiencies that I find are minor when it comes to, uh, you know, un unkept homes. But um, yeah, in any case, uh, that generally gives the first impression in the home. Um, number nine on my list is, uh, uh, I, I would say, structural issues. Like, for instance, if uh, the floor joists uh, are, are, um, are, are not aligned properly, uh, rafters, door headers, of cracks in them, um, stress cracks on walls and ceilings, uh, deflection in ceilings as well. Sometimes, uh, 
older homes, uh, what people tend to do is they like opening up things and they blow away a, a structural wall without knowing that it is structural. And uh, that's a common issue too. Um, so we look for things like that to make sure that uh, there wasn't anything structurally uh, deficient in a home uh, that the homeowner did uh, unknowingly. Um, number eight on my list would be uh, electrical. So as far as electrical goes, um, we check for things like uh, ground fault protection outside, uh, near water sources, um, and also anywhere um, where there could be loose wiring and, and whatnot. Uh, now, uh, with respect to uh, electrical um, uh, problems that we encounter, for the most part in older homes that were built in 19, uh, I would say 1965 to about 1973, uh, chances are you will have aluminum wiring in there. Now, aluminum wiring is something that is frowned upon by insurance companies. So um, just a heads up, if you are looking at a home in, that was built in that era, uh, you know, chances are you may have aluminum wiring and uh, you may get into a snag with the insurance companies. Um, so as far as that goes, uh, there isn't really uh, much you can do with a home other than, uh, you know, get in a master electrician and check connections because what they would want to see is to get a safety inspection done and that should satisfy the insurance companies. I like yeah. how uh, there's a few things that I've seen with you actually when we're talking about structural issues. I remember taking a look at a property that was a renovation and you yeah. uh, getting out your tape and saying, okay, see how this length is over, what was it, 10 and a half feet? And then there yeah. was no structure in there. And then in addition, you were pointing out that in that specific example, uh, they were claiming that they had a beam and uh, you were saying, see how the electrical goes through that beam, <laughs> pendant lights? That's yeah. not yeah. so much a beam. Exactly, exactly. So I and, mean, uh, taking a look at the aluminum guess, yeah. side, we often do yeah. see like, there's a huge amount of properties that fit the age range for aluminum wiring in the greater Edmonton area. Yeah, exactly. And often yeah. now insurance companies are going to be talking mostly about whether or not that has been pigtailed, like checking those connections and that's having right. some come through. And I think it's great to know that on the home inspection, because that's where that conversation starts. Like they've yeah. often only been in that house for 20 minutes to an hour at the point that they're making that call. And then it's their inspector that's bringing up the fact that the house that they've fallen in love with has what they see as being a terminal defect, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I like how you talk about it and say, you know yeah. what, uh, home inspe or the insurance company is going to have some extra questions in this. Yeah. Yeah. Most certainly. Um, and you have a you have a lot of understanding of electrical. Um, yeah. Uh, well, it helps. I'm an, I am an electrical engineer, so I, I do have some experience in that uh, in that respect. So uh, I pay more particular attention to my. Uh, field of expertise, uh, so to speak, but uh, um, I'm always one for safety and making sure that uh, if you are buying a home that, uh, you know, things are going to be safe for you to live in and making sure that down the road, you're not going to encounter any uh, major issues with liability and the electrical. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that you do that. Yeah. What else is on your list for those things? All right. Well, uh, um, going down um, uh, the furnace, actually. So uh, with heating systems now, uh, you can expect the general uh, life of a furnace, usually in the neighborhood of about 20 to 25 years. So uh, if you're going into a home and knowing that the furnace has already uh, reached or uh, passed its life expectancy, then uh, you can rest assured that you're probably looking at, um, you know, a new furnace. And um, these uh, furnaces are most likely mid-efficiency. And the government has a program that uh, is trying to get rid of all these carbon emitting appliances now. So uh, you may actually qualify for an energy rebate um, if you are thinking of replacing that furnace. So it's, it's worthwhile to look into. Um, some, sometimes we get furnaces that have been around for like 30, 40 years, uh, and they're still kicking around. But uh, I don't suggest that you keep those because uh, for one, we don't know what the heat exchanger looks like and that's a dangerous situation because uh, it could uh, generate carbon monoxide and it could also have uh, uh, exhaust gases 
um, from the furnace and the heat exchanger mixing in with, uh, with uh, heat inside your home. So that's uh, an unsafe situation to be in. So altogether, if I, I, if I were to look at a furnace that's past 25 to 30 years old, uh, I will suggest that the, you, know, you should replace it. So um, I appreciate that's that because I, would... I remember seeing a furnace from like 50 years ago right <laughs> and uh and you were looking at the vent and you're saying i don't see any plugs yeah <laughs> what does that mean uh so in that in that case that means it has never been maintained uh, the ducts have never ever been cleaned um in most cases if it has been cleaned usually the furnace uh, cleaning companies would place their stickers on there so if you don't see a sticker the chances are uh, it has never been clean. And, and you can tell by uh, opening up the cabinet yourself and seeing how dusty the uh, cabinet looks inside. Um, also, uh, what's also important is uh, with furnaces now, uh, sometimes there are newer furnaces that I take a look at. It's also important that these newer furnaces, let's say within the last 10 years, has been uh, inspected uh, by code from the city of Edmonton. Uh, or wherever municipality that uh, was installed in. So it, it's very important because uh, once again, it's, it could be a liability issue if it wasn't installed properly, uh, that if there was a liability that was caused by the installation of the uh, furnace, uh, insurance companies aren't gonna pay out because they're, that's the first thing they're gonna check uh, if it was uh, installed to code. So very important to know. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. And I like how you're uh, um, able to answer like two or three questions. I always find that that's the best part of the home inspection when everybody's yeah. standing around the kitchen table kind of discussing these different elements, because I think yeah. that the thing that people look past, they know that they are there to protect them of problems, but the report that you give them is almost like the owner's manual of an existing home, like the state of the union in this place. Yeah, uh, well, it's important to know what you're buying and it's important to know how things work. Uh, so I, I would say that uh, if you know nothing about a home, um, that's where I try to do my best to uh, educate you in, in terms of uh, maintenance as well as how everything works inside the home as well, right? So, okay, well, yeah. let's, uh, I'll, I'll continue on here. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, keep going. List. Yeah, so uh, I think the next thing on my list would be um, hidden mold or, or uh, bacterial growth. Now, it's important that um, mold exists because of improper ventilation or because of a leak. Uh, and and uh, sometimes we can't see it. Uh, sometimes I do uh, see uh, visible mold. Um, you know, it's obvious to see, but sometimes if I see water stains, uh, it could be hidden within a wall or um, you'd have to rip out uh, something in order to access and, and actually see visible mold. But if you smell mustiness, um, dangerous situation to be in. Uh, we don't like to see mold. Uh, we don't like to see any water issues in a home because that uh, has health implications. Um, but for the most part, uh, we use an infrared camera. I personally uh, cannot do an inspection unless I um, go through the home with uh, an infrared uh, thermal image uh, and ev everywhere where I can uh, potentially detect uh, what, where I think water could be present. Um, so if, if I find any signature of any water stain, um, I'm on top of it and I'll write down to make sure that uh, uh, further investigation is warranted uh, because obviously we can't rip out walls and ceilings. But uh, uh, for me, that's important, um, you know, if it's a health implication here. Well, that's one yeah. of the things that I didn't really know before I had attended as many home inspections as I did is like, one of the very first things that you're doing once you kind of get to the inside of a house is you turn every single tap on you can find. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, that gets not that only... water flowing. And, yeah. and then where the rubber meets the road there is that later, so you've, you've filled all these water systems, you've kind of done your initial check, and then you've given time for these water systems to move through and you pull out your infrared camera. And I remember standing like beside you and we're looking at a wall and you're saying, okay, see where all of this stuff is straight. Like you can yep. hang pictures with that uh, infrared. And then yeah. what you're looking for is things don't, don't look like regular construction. Like water doesn't have square edges. 
Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, uh, the infrared camera that I use uh, has paid for itself in spades. You know, it's quite an expensive piece of And it was a cheap one, right? Uh, well, <laughs> if, you, if you call $10,000 plus cheap, that's, <laughs> that's fine by me. But <laughs> Well, I always laugh because, <laughs> yeah. like, you can get an infrared camera for, like, $300 at uh, Canadian yeah. Tire. But yeah. really, you know, there's, like, ratings to these. Yeah, it's important to have... Uh, uh, I use the best piece of equipment that I um, I can use because if uh, if you're not accurate, uh, you know your reporting won't be accurate. So that's how I, uh, you know, that's how I uh, figure out in in terms of the equipment that I use. Uh, I have nothing but the best in the industry. So and I wouldn't have confidence any other yeah. way. And it's because yeah. that's the experience. Like I remember the first time that we were in a basement uh, where there was in floor heating. Yeah. And you showed me where it is. Like mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people think it must be everywhere, but when you're heating those big concrete slabs, it runs in these like channels, right? Yeah. And that was something that was really neat. But sorry for hijacking your list. Uh, oh, you no worries. Your way yeah. through. You bet. You bet. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, let's go on to the next uh, on my list. Is uh, now this is a, a very big uh, uh, issue that came up in the last couple of days, uh, and that's to do with insufficient insulation and ventilation. Um, I can uh, count uh, the number of homes on my hands, and, and it's probably about uh, eight homes that I did in the last uh, 10 days that had attic rain. And let me explain to you what happened. Um, because of all the cold weather that we've experienced in the last couple of days, the minus 25, minus 30 degree weather, a lot of heat was uh, being lost inside the attic. And I'm talking about almost new homes within five to 10 years. What's been happening is, is that heat was escaping through um, into the attic and uh, it was condensing with the cold air from the outside and creating frost uh, underneath the roof sheathing. And uh, uh, I've seen anywhere from about an inch thick to about four inches thick of frost. Now, um, in the last couple of days when it got warm, I have opened attic hatches where it was almost literally raining, melting snow and onto the ceiling. And uh, that's where a lot of problems had occurred. Now, it's due to improper ventilation uh, mostly. So uh, I, I think that uh, in a lot of newer homes, um, I think that the builders should pay more attention to the ventilation because uh, I've been seeing a lot of attic mm. rain lately and, and that's not good for a home because uh, when we get these uh, cold spells and uh, a day or two later when it goes into the plus um, degrees, uh, it's, it's going to melt and you'll see water come through your, your ceiling uh, through light fixtures and whatnot. So. Um, those are things to watch for. Also, what has come up too is uh, uh, one area of heat loss is your attic hatch. Uh, I've seen a lot of cases. In fact, I would say 90 to 95% of the homes that I inspect, I always record that the attic hatch is not properly insulated or sealed into place. So that's an area, it's like having an open door um, where the heat's going to be lost and uh, that's where all the heat is getting lost inside the attic as well. So very, very important to, you know, to keep an eye on, on heat loss and through your attic. Man, that's things yeah. that uh, it's always uh, incredible to hear that because people don't understand all the uh, elements that could even be going on in their own home while they're there. Yeah, exactly. You, know, like you might see moisture around a light fixture now and again. Mm -hmm. And that could be evidence that it was just the environment outside that was making enough of a shift for it to rain inside of your attic, which sounds terrifying. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Not a good situation to be in, especially in a brand new home. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and, and one of the homes that I inspected was in, uh, uh, in the Windermere area, a brand new home, never been lived in. And, uh, you know, the builder was there. I showed him the problem and, uh, he couldn't believe it. So anyway, um, he was on top of it. So those are the things that 
that have come up in the last couple of days. Um, so um, continuing on, uh, let's move on to plumbing. Now, as far as plumbing concerned, uh, I can talk for hours on plumbing, but uh, the most uh, issues that I come up with is hot water heaters. Now, the age of a hot water heater, the expected life of a hot water heater typically is about eight to 12 years. If I come into a home and I see a hot water heater that is well past its service life, um, I cannot guarantee or nobody can guarantee how long it's going to last, although it could be in working condition at the time I do my inspection. Um, you can probably uh, plan on having it fail in the next couple of uh, uh, days, years, who knows, but expect to have a new hot water tank in the future, near future at least anyway. Um, also, um, you know, I catch sometimes a lot of leaking pipes uh, in the older pipes. Sometimes the uh, compression ring where the uh, P-trap is connected to the uh, tailpiece underneath the sink is, is cross-threaded. Uh, I catch a, a lot of leaks in that area. Um, now, uh, let me talk about uh, uh, another thing that has come up recently is uh, uh, the type of material that's being used um, in older homes. Now, um, poly B, which is polybutylene piping, um, its characteristic uh, color is gray. So if you're in a home that was built in the, uh, I would say 70s to up until actually 2005, and it's, it, it was used. And uh, it was uh, um, stopped as a, a, a building standard for using in, in uh, uh, homes uh, in 2005. Um, once again, uh, insurance companies uh, do not like Poly B. Uh, I had a client a couple of days ago. Uh, he was interested in purchasing a home and he called me up saying that, uh, what do you think of Poly B? Um, I have no problems with Poly B. I have Poly B in my own home, but it's the insurance companies that have a problem with it. Um, there were lawsuits back in uh, late 90s, early 2000s, uh, because poly B was um, rupturing. And the reason why they were rupturing is because uh, they were using poly B fitting or plastic fittings uh, with, uh, with a piping. Um, here in Alberta, we're not seeing a lot of that. Um, we were smart enough to use metal fittings, like copper fittings. So we're not seeing a lot of it, but um, insurance companies don't understand that. And uh, the reason why they were rupturing with uh, plastic uh, fittings was because a lot of the people were turning up their hot water heaters to extremely high temperatures, and that's where it was breaking down. So... Um, I would say that if you do have poly B, you may run into insurance um, snags and, and just, just be aware that uh, insure, you may have to talk to a lot of insurance companies that are willing to insure you for a home with poly B. Yeah, we actually yeah. spoke to a plumber about that the other day. There are plumbers that will go out and take a look at these things just to kind of see if it's degrading. But you yeah. know, the nature of that material is it doesn't give a lot of indicators. Yeah. So uh, helping yeah. people approach those and helping them have the right conversations is awesome. Well, I really yeah. appreciate you coming by and talking to us a little bit about some of the things yeah. that are catching your eye right now. Some of the things yeah. that are the latest and greatest in home inspections. I know yeah. that everybody can find you because they can easily find you as a trusted expert on our trusted expert list. You're definitely somebody that uh, we use. Uh, my own family has used. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, maintaining that great relationship for the next, yeah. you know, few hundred home inspections. Yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> and thank yeah. you so much for your contest tonight. Uh, Edgar yeah. has given away the universal gift certificate of cash. Uh, <laughs> it is accepted uh, uh, in your bank account and uh, then can be uh, tapped as you please. So thank you so much for coming by, Edgar. We really appreciate you. And I'm sure that we're going to see you soon. Certainly a pleasure.